supply we stole, right? Now, there are what we call as qualitative forecast versus quantitative forecast. What is the qualitative forecast? A qualitative forecast is a forecast that is extremely, what I call it, subjective. Brainstorming. Panel consensus. Survey. All these are what I call as qualitative forecast. Now what are quantitative forecast? Quantitative forecasts are extremely objective. The more objective you are, it's a lot easier for you guys to go to the boardroom and make your recommendation. Okay? So we will focus all our effort in the classroom looking at quantitative forecasting techniques. Qualitative, it's great. Gut feeling, brainstorming, panel consensus, survey method, Delphi method, all these are wonderful, but it all depends upon the people involved. That's the reason why it's very subjective as opposed to quantitative forecast, which is very, very objective. One of the very first forecasts I'm going to discuss in the classroom is what I call as a time series forecast. What's a time series forecast? A time series forecast is a forecast that depends heavily on historic data. A time series forecast depends heavily on historic data. So the goal out here is the past is a good guide to the future. So the past is a good guide to the future. That's what a time series forecast is. Now, a typical time series, and this is a it's critical, it's important we understand this. A critical time series actually has four major components. A typical time series has four major components. The first component is what I call as a trend. What is a trend? A trend is nothing but a trend is nothing but a gradual, a gradual up or downward movement of data. A trend is nothing but a gradual upward or downward shift in data. I'll show you, I'll, I'll give you guys examples in a minute. Number two is what I call a cycle. What's a cycle? A cycle is pretty much something that repeats itself, right? It's an up and down movement that repeats, that repeats over a time period, over a long time period. Once in three years, once in four years, I leap here, you, you come back to wherever you started. That's a cycle. The third, which is very important and something you guys can all appreciate is what I call as seasonality. Seasonal or seasonality. A seasonal pattern. Where you might have some products or some services that you're offering where demand will go up. Okay? There are certain times a year where demand goes down. So it's nothing but a periodic, periodic oscillation it's a periodic oscillation in demand. So if it's not a trend, if it's not a cycle, if it's not a cyclical uh, pattern, if it's not a seasonal pattern, it's going to be random noise. Okay? A random noise. A random noise obviously follows absolutely no pattern. Your hope is that you have, this is few and far between, right? Because with random noise or random movement, you cannot pinpoint exactly what happened. And that's a danger, right? If you're not able to pinpoint what happened, you're in trouble. So the random movement or random noise follows absolutely no pattern. 
So in a typical time series, these are four critical components that I want you guys to understand because when we actually work with data, initially we'll take the data as given and apply all the techniques and then we'll come back and ask the question, what's going to happen if my data has any trend? What's going to happen if the data has any seasonal pattern? How do I go back and revise my forecasting tool to address the fact that in my company, for some of my products or some of my services, there is a certain trend or a certain seasonal pattern or a certain cyclical pattern. If you're not able to incorporate these things in your forecast, what you're going to get is simply garbage, right? So initially what we'll do is we will disregard them for time being. Then we'll come back and ask the question, how do I, uh, how do I take my forecast and make some changes to it so that I'm able to address any trend issues or seasonal issues or cyclical issues, right? So the basic funda that I want to convey to you guys behind a time series model, okay? The basic funda that I want to convey to you guys for a time series model is you need to understand how to distinguish, how do I distinguish between between random fluctuation, random fluctuation and true changes, true changes in the demand pattern. This is to me a basic funda that I need for you guys to understand when you talk about a time series. Understand what is random and what is not random. If it's not random, how do we address it? Okay. So, one of the very first techniques I want to cover in the classroom is what I call as a simple moving average technique. This is, this, the reason I'm, I'm trying to kind of push you guys to you know, talk about this is very important. It's absolutely critical to understand, you know, what kind of forecast. Because I'll tell you why. Because every single decision you're taking in your company is driven by those predictions, whatever you're forecasting. So whatever you're forecasting drives all the decisions, whether it's human resource, whether it's financial commitment, okay, whether it's kind of a marketing issue, everything is driven. The key driver to some of the big decisions you take in a company comes from those predictions you make.